Let's kick it. <laughs> Hello and welcome to what's new in Windows Whistler Build 2287. As you can see we are now firmly on the track to Beta 1, as I think this was the technical beta, was sent out to companies and stuff like that so they could start testing it. And yeah, there's not many changes in this one or the next one, or well yeah, until 2410, which is the next major overhaul. So yeah, as you can see the theme's the same, and I mean identically the same. Um, yeah, the clock's the same, the taskbar's the same. The only major, well, visible difference is that these icons have changed here, the internet and the email one. Now, you may be thinking, hmm, I've seen those somewhere before. And you'd be right. If we look in the start menu for 2267, so it's a bit of a while ago now, and it was this picture here, in the start menu properties, this picture, actually had those icons in it, the internet and the mail icon and as you can see the rest of the start menu as it took shape now it, it looks pretty much exactly like that now obviously when they actually put those icons in the picture they used for the start menu had the old icons in it so yeah <laughs> not quite sure what happened there but yeah it's pretty much exactly the same the only difference I can tell is that the control panel does not have network connections underneath it as it, oh don't want to see that as it does in the proper stat menu now. So yeah, the only other visible change that I noticed straight off the bat is that I said in the last video that the which one is it in this one? The Windows ME pictures lasted until the RC. That was a complete and utter lie because they're already gone in this build, so they existed in 2276, and that was that. There's no more shedding field or Yosemite or whatever the eclipse picture was called. So yeah, what a complete lie that was. They only existed for one build. One thing I didn't mention in the last build, because that video was already long enough as it was, was that there was a brand new oob in there. And to run that, sometimes you get it on installing and I didn't, so... You have to trigger it manually, and that's just msoob slash f. And there you go, you get a nice little animation. And yeah, it's a different to the Windows ME one, where they just replaced all the ME references with Whistler. It's now got its own sort of style, with the Whistler picture sort of in the background. And the logo in the top left. The only real thing to mention about this that I found hilarious was this here, the mouse tutorial. It tells you to start the mouse tutorial by clicking the button and then as part of the tutorial it tells you how to click the mouse. So, hmm, yeah. I mean, you pretty much already got to know how to click the mouse in order to get to the tutorial. Well, that's not straight the truth, is it? You could use the keyboard but it doesn't say use the keyboard, it just tells you to click it, so... Yeah, so like I said, that's pretty much all there is to it. There's a tutorial. There's practice clicking, you can how to use the mouse, and now you get to make a picture. I noticed all these locations are in Europe for some reason, I don't know why that is, but... They are. Especially with it being an American product, I'm not really sure why. But yeah, you, you can just, just, it just helps you learn how to use the different widgets and controls that Windows has. And there's pretty much not much to say about it. You get a picture at the end of it and it goes, yeah, well done, you learn how to click some boxes and everything. And then after that, there's pretty much, you can set up the computer users if you haven't already. I already have, so I'm not going to do that. And then you get to the end of it. And that's the app. That's that. Pretty much nothing else. There's nothing new. There's no mail in for a start off. I noticed that. 
There is um, code in the HTML files to launch some agents, but they don't seem to be present or anything because nothing ever shows up. Well, with the digitized speech, digitized speech that Merlin had, it's pretty much for good measure that it doesn't turn up because, you know, who, who wants that again? Another curiosity I noticed that was in the last build, well, started in the last build, and you may notice me doing this a lot because this build really doesn't have anything new in it. Not, well, it has some things new, but not really earth shatteringly new. And it's this show my documents and show my network places on the desktop. Now, you may remember from the last video where I showed that there was a new method of hiding the icons of the shell folders that Windows didn't want to see on the desktop, like my computer and all that. Well, this one sort of goes against that, or with it, or whatever. Because you can see this checkbox here, it says show my documents on the desktop, and they're checked, along with the my network places, but it doesn't actually exist on the desktop. That's because those GUIDs exist in the high desktop icons registry key, so they don't actually show up, even though these boxes are checked. Now obviously, if you uncheck them, then obviously they don't turn up. But now, with them unchecked, even if you go into desktop and desktop items and turn them on from here, they still won't turn up. So, in order to enable those icons now, they have to be enabled in two different places, which is a usability nightmare. Because why would you need to enable them from two different places? It just doesn't make sense, and there's no signposts that you have to do that. And then tick these, it does eventually, when I get there, it does work, so it does show them. So yeah, it's just a oddity I noticed introduced with this new method of hiding the icons. And that will remain until, I don't know, I'm not getting into that again. The one big change for this build, for there is only one, and maybe you can see already from just here. Yep, the presence of the inetpub folder means now we have IIS installed. Now what's IIS? Well, it's Microsoft's web server. And you can navigate to it if you go to http colon slash slash localhost or 127.0.0.1. And eventually Eventually you get this, which is the start page for IIS 5.1, which is the version that is installed. And when you get this, you also get this new window, which opens up something that you're obviously not authorized to view. It's meant to be the help page, but it obviously doesn't work, so yeah. I think test these things, wouldn't you? But yeah, there's that, and in order to go with IIS and all that, there is a new tab on the properties page. The folder properties, there's now this new web sharing tab, and what you can do with that is share the folder, just like you can with normal um, SIFs or SMB sharing, that's what I'm after. So you can check which permissions you allow people to have. So they could be able to write, which would correspond to like posting and putting HTTP requests, or just directory browsing, or reading, and all that stuff. So anyway, what you do is you share that, and then that allows people to open up a browser, and then go to the website. And then after the slash, you can type in the folder you shared, which was bits in this case. And then in another six months, after it's decided that it would like to load it, you finally get a directory listing. Now, if you don't enable the directory listing properly, you just get a 403 error because you're not authorized to look at the folder. So yeah, what this does, it obviously lets you easily share things to people who might not be on your local network, but who might have the IP address of your computer. So you can share and go, hey, look, come on, look at my picture of some bottles. And then they'd click on it. 
and this version doesn't seem to resize the picture when you click on it so so I can't fit it on the screen but I can assure you it is a picture of some bottles so yeah that's obviously that you can serve your own HTML and websites and all that if you go into CINET pub and into www root and obviously all these files here are the ones that it uses to run when you start so obviously actually I don't know I've never used IIS so I don't really know the ins and outs of it but yeah there's this what's this one do let's have a let's have an explore okay so that does that so if we copy this to index.html which is always the first page well unless you have any other extensions which let it be in the oh that didn't work how about just yeah that works I think there's an MMC snapping for I can't remember the name of the tool but there is one and you can manage IIS with it and it's that one there handily called Internet Information Services so you know it's the one that manages Internet Information Services Microsoft are crafty like that so yeah obviously this is also new for this build and you can change which port it runs on and how many connections you allow you allow it to have and all this good stuff and you can tune the performance I presume this scales how much memory it uses and how many is happy filters and which directory it's actually in so you can have to have it in inet pub if you don't want to you could have it somewhere in my documents if you're feeling adventurous Oop. yeah you see you can also have it share on a different computer and well you can read this and play around with it yourself so yeah it's all it's all good so IIS, yep, that's new in this build and it seems to be a bit clunky because it takes forever to navigate to the website, it takes forever for that to close. Nope. Okay, so I've had a route around in the IIS folder and I've created this test folder in here which has no specific permissions. It's just, let's IIS deal with all that but anyway it's just a test folder so then if we go to my documents and then into my pictures because there's only one, one file in here and that'll make it quite easy to do you can open up the web publishing wizard folder thing and then add in well that precisely so put into the test folder that we just created and then straight away it will just straight copy files obviously if you're doing this on a different computer it won't do it straight away because this is using the windows accounts on the computer and it knows I'm already um, authenticated because I'm logged in so if we try a different computer it probably won't do that but yeah now we can see when I open it up and if I go to http colon slash slash localhost slash test Slash. Did I have anything on? I don't know if I left directory browsing on or not, so... No, I didn't, so this is what you get if you don't leave directory browsing on and you try and browse the directory, you get that. So if I type in the rest of what it should be... That's by pictures, isn't it, no documents? Then one of the files was vince.gif, well, d file, and there you go, I see with it now works and the publishing wizard works so if MSN was still around you'd be able to use that to publish the files to the MSN user space yeah I just love this gif it's even better when it runs smoothly but yeah so that now works I will go back and try the original version where that showed up. So here we are back in 22.23 to see if the web publishing actually works from a different computer. So here we are. Obviously this still doesn't work because, well, it's the same thing. 
So let's type in the address of the 2287 compute. And that's, I think that's right. And it's the test folder. I still don't know what these mean or they're for, so let's just. And let's click that in clear step makes a difference. I don't think it does, but let's just click it anyway. And okay, is it gonna do anything? Oop, it did something. Oop. What did it do? Oh, well it gives us a web folder page. Okay. And it gives us an FTP kind of type folder. Hmm. Well, there's nothing there, so it hasn't uploaded anything, has it? What was it? Sample.jpg? Hmm. So let us do that then. As Bob. Ah, it's not there. And as if by magic we can have a look and see if it actually is there, which it probably isn't, but let's just have a verification check. Nah, it's not in there, so nope, that doesn't work. I could probably test in 2250, but I'd have to download and install that one again, and I don't really feel like it, because it probably... W let's try the other thing on it then. The sample... That one didn't work, let's try this one. D6.01 Oh well it opened the same thing but it didn't seem to... Oh there we go, oh, hey it did actually work. There you go, it took a bit of a while afterwards to, to, to start the transfer but it did actually work so there we go. So much for me poo pooing it in 2223 video it does actually work when you get the right combination of ingredients going and I did say put a thing in here and it did put a thing in here and it's just a straight nice web folder. Oh you still need a password to view the picture that's a bit weird. Oh there you go though it does work if you get the right password. So yeah, it does work in 2223. Here's another thing I noticed when I was sort of messing around with trying to, well I was trying to enable these buttons but then when I opened Spy++ Plus Plus, I noticed there were two windows called Start Menu. So I showed them because otherwise obviously you can't see them. And I got the normal Start Menu, that's just obviously the normal one with my four icons which normally had. Then I tried opening the other one and then notice he, on the on the programs listed in the start menu then oh they it, it, it changed to two to two pictures two pictures two items no pattern bits instead of spy plus plus there you go so yeah i don't know how that managed to happen i couldn't get it to happen again so i'm not sure quite how it happened but yeah it, it did happen and it won't dis it didn't disappear so I could keep enabling it and disabling it and yeah you see that's a normal start menu with the four items on it and then obviously there was the other start menu which was seems to be from an early iteration which had the two on it so yeah I'm not quite sure how that happened or when that happened but I just noticed it when I was going to enable the the buttons at the top of the start menu properties so hmm I can't tell you how to do it yourself because I don't know how to do it again, so... After I stopped recording that little bit, I kept messing around with it and moved one of them to the side and I managed to get them to appear side by side like this. Yeah, like I said, I, the original one on the left would appear and disappear when I clicked on the start button, but the other one just wouldn't sort of disappear. Another oddity I noticed with the start menu was with the shift click to keep it open, which has been re-enabled. And if you do that, shift click on the start button to keep it open and then go to the screensaver tab 
then it works with any of them but if you select the log on screen server the one which has the whistler banner and then select preview then everything looks fine at first apart from the fact that the start menus over the top of the screen server but when the banner moves it expects it's the topmost window with nothing behind it and it just overwrites part of the start menu yeah there's no use to it you can you know, obviously if you move the mouse it'll stop happening so it's not like you can click on the banner or anything or that it will make anything special happen it's just a weird oddity I noticed with the start menu being on top like that Time up a loose end from the last build I've already sent a remote assistance invitation so that we see if computers of the same vintage can participate in this here we go Now you probably heard that, that's not played on this computer, that's in fact played on the computer that sent the help request when this dialog shows up. And it says do you want to start the help session now? And if, you're, if you were in peril with your computer you would most likely click yes. And then you get this dialog and for some reason any maximized windows would become unmaximized. As you can see bits of the desktop background peeking through in the top right here. So you get this dialogue and then you can now start chatting with the person on the other hand. And you go, hey helper. And then on the helping computer, you get a similar dialogue here, except you don't, because this is actually the view of the other computer. I got confused by this at first, I thought this was actually up here and I started try clicking and typing it and going, hmm, why is it not working? But obviously it's down here on the sending computer. and it appears on there because this is now viewing the other computer as you can obviously tell and yeah it's just using the like remote desktop connection the same thing that technology that, that uses this is using that and at some point you'd probably get sick of the person on the other end not following your instructions and you just click on take control and then the other computer gets this dialogue showing on it and it says your helper wants to take control are you sure you want to give him control and then after verifying he's not a bad man you probably go yes he seems quite nice he'll help me and then when that happens you can now control the other computer obviously you can pretty much do whatever you want that the other user could do so if you wanted to you could delete system files and stuff like that I'm sure somebody at one point in the lifetime of XP and the lifetime of this feature has done that so I've gone yeah I'll help you then gone on and messed up the computer even more so yeah that's what you can do and then at some point you probably go right that's all fixed then and the person on the other end would go right that's all fixed then and then they'd go bye and then quit and it doesn't close straight away but on the other end it says Bob has quit and is no longer connected to your computer so you quit and you go yep that's a job well done and for some reason it leaves up the help thing afterwards, I don't know why it does that, instead of just closing the window completely, like this, I mean, you don't need it, so, not sure why that's there. This doesn't mean maximize, so that's left in its unmaximized state. So yeah, it does work, and it's a pretty nifty feature, obviously. This remote assistance isn't quite bulletproof yet at this early stage, as you might expect here on 2276 sometimes when accepting the invitation you say yes this happens and it says a fatal error has occurred it cannot continue and even though this pops up you can't interact with it and then if you click OK it exits and then on the helping computer the one who's doing the helping you get this that says connection refused by Bob which is well it doesn't say Bob it would say the name of whoever sent it but that seems quite disingenuous because even though they said yes and it failed it says refused by Bob so the person on the other end might go why are you sending invitations if you don't actually want my help which seems a perfectly reasonable thing to say after getting the error message but yeah it's not quite bulletproof and that's really all there is to 2287 I know you're used to these videos being like a lifetime long by now but really that's all there is I mean if you look at the diffs for it the ones for 2287 is less than pretty much every other build we've looked at so far apart from 2202 
But yeah, even that 217 kilobytes is pretty much just made up of these, which are minor dialogue and version string changes. I mean, if we just look at the certificate manager one, for instance, that says 5.126.26.2276.1, and that says 5.1.2287.1, and that's literally the only change in that DLL. Likewise, the one underneath, which was certificate templates, then that's number seven. And as you can see, the only change there is also just the version number. So it might look like there's a lot of changes if we scroll down this, but there really isn't. The only major change is in Explorer, which added those two icons to the start menu, and that's it. These are the changes because they've changed the number of the icons where they go. So they've made the new icons number 54, for example. So that's why it looks like it's changed. But yeah, everything else is pretty much just version numbers and little tiny bits which have been removed which aren't really worth commenting on. In the next build there's even less to comment on because that's pretty much exactly the same and that'll be 2296 but I shall still see you there.